the next thing I would need to do is set up a live video input. This will detect any web camera sources, any NDI sources, screens that you have on your current machine and host them via to be a live camera feed. So you can see here, I am pretty much fetching that NDI feed that's being hosted through Tidal Live. I can also add an additional input and I can grab a PTZ optics camera that's in the office. We'll go ahead and see the lights are off right now, but we can see that it's pretty much a live video source. Now, the next thing we wanna to do to be able to curate instant replay is enable this instant replay toggle. Now underneath the toggle, we will see instant replay and we can set the timer for how long it's going to log that replay. So we can set it to log a 15 second replay, a 30 second replay, all the way up to 60 seconds. And we'll see here that the memory used is pretty much it recording that clip for use. And the reason why we add that there so users understand available memory and how it could be affecting something like read or write time, or maybe even the performance of the software relative to what machine they're running it on. So we're going to go ahead and hit done for now. And we'll see that under Vividcast, we have under our main live output, this first camera that we added. Now we can, if we want to switch to the second camera, and we see that we have two different cameras. If we want to use one of the transitions from this graphics library that's particular to acrylic, we can go ahead and cue that transition. And now when we switch those camera sources, it'll use that transition to switch between the two. And we do have a transitions library that does ship with Vividcast. But like I said, if you have any graphics that ship with Tire Life 5 and they have transition graphics, which I would say about 70% of those libraries do have a transition graphic that belongs to them, can be used in here as a transition or as a graphic stinger. So now let's go ahead and start using our instant replay feature. So let me go ahead and move this from the top so I can actually interact with that top bar UI. We can see an instant replay button here. We simply enable the instant replay. And what it'll do is it'll generate a little, uh, an interface for th on the bottom right. So we can see actually Jordan who produced this footage used a Stinger transition that he created in Vividcast to do his own instant replay that coincidentally we get to witness here. So pretty much what he did is he captured a moment in his broadcast he used the instant replay key and then played it over his live footage. And then it uses a transition to cut into the instant replay and cut out of it and then go back into the footage in real time. So one thing that we need to do in order to do that ourselves is we can see here that we are currently on our live feed. Now what we need to do is, let me move this a little higher and enter replay. So once we enter replay, we will see that when we enter the replay, it is going to start recording that. When we play or click between any of these two sources, it'll pretty much find that instant replay. So we can see that the instant, the live monitor is this little tiny picture in picture here, but the cached instant replay is the larger monitor behind it. We'll see that playing in slow-mo. We can also see the runtime for that replay until it ends. We can also pause it or assign the total speed playback of it. So for example, we wanted to play in slow motion in quarter times or half times. We can assign that from here, or if we want to use to have it sped up or be in real time, we can use that option from here. But it's just a matter of clicking between, and it's pretty seamless in my, in my opinion, being able to click between your real time footage and then cutting into your instant replay footage. And then we can exit the replay and then we can start generating a new replay by either clicking the instant replay again or jumping back into here. So let's say, for example, I enter my replay again. Now I've generated a new replay once I hit the enter based off of the time code that I see being recorded to the left of it. Got another so, great question from Adam Walthall. Can you scrub forward in the replay? I believe so, but let me go ahead and show this. So we can scrub through the replay and then play it. And now it'll play through the scrub through point right here. That is the starting point. And then it just kind of plays out throughout it. So it seems like when I scrub through, am I getting actual updates? So yeah. So one thing you might want to do is scrub to the point first before you actually play it. That way, like you saw here when I played it and then I scrubbed through, it actually cued the transition again. So you want to kind of scrub through it prior and then play it so you can find the actual end point for it. It, it might take a little bit of uh, like some practice getting familiar with what cues what, 
because there are a lot of things to interact with on this interface. But after a while, it does become a, a rather intuitive, especially since it's all being operated from just one panel. There's no need of having to uh, go between different interfaces and pressing all this stuff and set up and then making sure that it all works seamlessly every single time you do queue it. We can see there are some ads are being played. I'll go ahead and click out of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have one more question from Adam Walthall. Yeah. Is, um, does it save each file? Yes. So one thing that we can kind of briefly mention is that when we hit record or stream or both, we can actually set up a Vividcast under recording to output to a specific file location. It does come with its own encoder, encoder and a file format that we can select. So let me go ahead and expose those properties. We can see we have two different encoders. We also do have three different file formats. So for example, if you want to record something very light, you want to use the TS format. We can see here that we can decide to capture our instant replay clips by toggling this on. And then additionally, we can ISO record. So if, for example, I wanted to record a separate, um, a separate, a separate uh, recording for both my PTZ optics camera and this uh, live cam or this uh, recorded footage that was provided to us, I can use ISO recording to have that brought it be recorded and then brought into an NLES two separate um, paragraphs into there.